Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clementson, and if you're a recruiter out on your own or just lacking general guidance or mentorship, then you've come to the right place. Our daily episodes are designed to give you the motivation, advice, and strategies you need to succeed as a lone recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Today is Wednesday, which means I'm on my quest to interview 100 recruiters with the same five questions about what makes them successful as a recruiter. Today, uh, we're joined by Jesse Herrick from Calidus Group. He founded in 2019 and focuses on the recruitment of HR professionals. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you, Brett. Um, let's kick it off. Uh, tell me your life's highlight reel in 60 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> well, I don't, 60 seconds is short, mate, but. Um, I grew up on the Northern Beaches, very blessed to have done that and haven't left. Mm -hmm. um, have, no, we never leave. I have considered it a few times, but um, haven't found anywhere that I like more. Um, and I originally started in real estate sales Before. for a independent called Marriott Lane mm -hmm. in Crow's Nest and then went to McGrath mm -hmm. and then uh, burnt out and left the industry. <laughs> what burnt you out about? Oh, mate, 20 years old, trying to be a real estate agent, have mm -hmm. a social life. Uh, just burning the candle at both ends. So you jumped into recruitment. <laughs> Basically, yeah, <laughs> washed up into recruitment when I was late twenties. Yeah, I might, I might try and uh, fix that by going into recruitment. <laughs> uh, I spent six months on the beach in uh, Perth trying to figure out my life, and landed in recruitment of uh, real estate people. Makes sense. Which was a lot of fun, um, and haven't looked back since. You know, I really like um, recruitment. It was very similar to me the process of matching candidates and clients mm. with buyers and sellers. And that whole influencing piece really came naturally after so many years of doing it. Yeah, cool. Um, and then after a couple of jobs in recruitment, I decided, you know what? Um, I think I can do this on my own. Mm. Um, took a bold move and jumped out and started Calidus Group and the rest is history. Fantastic, mate. And um, kicking goals nonetheless? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mate, ups and downs, but uh, you know how it is. That's it, mate. Do you do real estate now? No, no, no. Okay. but I'm trying to buy some places myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we know all the tricks. <laughs> Try those tricks on me, boy. I've seen you before. <laughs> but no, no, no active interest in the outside from that. All right, perfect. Look, you know, you run your own thing, so clearly you're good at what you do. And I think our audience would be really curious to know the top five questions today. So we'll kick it off. Um, if you could only have one KPI, mm -hmm. I mean, no one loves a KPI, but we all know they're important one KPI that matters the most? Like, Which one do you look at to go, I'm on track or I'm not on track? It's gotta be interviews, booked interviews with clients. Love it. Like, There's so many in and around that, mm -hmm. but really a success metric. If you've got a good candidate in front of a qualified client for a real role, mm -hmm. that's where you're making money. 100%. You know, like that's, that's, that's gotta be the number. <clears throat> I had a lot of people on this podcast and no one has given me that answer. Really? And that's my answer. Really? Yeah, yeah. We, heard, we haven't talked, but I was in my head going when I wrote that, I thought, I know my metric is interviews because if you're getting interviews, you know that everything leading up to it's been done right. Yeah. And you know that you've got stuff to work on after that. Whereas some people count other metrics. And I think, um, what were some of the other ones? I can't remember, but like if, we, if it's like, oh, how many in mails did I send? Well, there's no guarantee of anything coming back off that, right? Mm. But the moment you got people in front of them, you get a good sense of where you sit. No, I love it. I love it. The one KPI that matters the most, interviews. Interviews. Boom. Book them. Book them. <laughs> Book them. That's all that matters. All right, two. You've got 10 minutes and you know you can only fit three interview questions in. Disclaimer. That's not a great interview, <laughs> but if you have to, you have to dial in three interview questions on a napkin. What are those? What are those questions that, that get you going? Okay, I can help you. I can make money here. For me, it's I really want to understand what the driving force is. You know, why are you leaving your current role? Mm -hmm. Not and not not the bullshit answer either. You know, like I'm mm. um, chasing career progression, mm. or you know, the culture isn't great. What's really going on? That because triggered because I'm representing you to my client who trusts me mm. and I want to know what the story is because I can only help you and put you in the best possible role mm. if I know what your true motivators are. Yep. So I have to know that, okay. number one. How do you cut through the rubbish? Like if, if they're giving you those really surface level, oh, it's career, it's not really about money, but I'm, you know, how do you cut through? Well, some people, they regardless of how much you try to help them, you can't. 
you know, because mm. they wanted their guard down, mm. you know, and that's okay. But the majority of people, if you build trust and mm. rapport early on, they'll open up because they know you're trying to help them. Mm. It's in everybody's best interest here to be open. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And do you have a, do you have an approach? Like if you get that sense, okay, they're giving me garbage here, like, there's nothing to work with. Like, do you have like a, a that, that follow-up question that kind of levels it, that goes, can't work with me here. Do you have one of those ones or do you? I think it's just keep um, asking the question in new ways and digging into what they say. What does that mean to you? Why? How come? You mm. know, and keep continually mm. digging and digging and digging. Until it makes sense. Until it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and you'll get to a point, most people will be pretty open, they'll give you the sort of safe answer first. Yeah. You know, what does that mean to you? Mm. Well, how about this? Mm. Why? You know, yep. and, and most people respond pretty well. Yeah, cool. I like it. Um, second? Second yourself? one, I really want to know where they're heading. Like, right. um, what's their career aspirations? Mm -hmm. You know, what are you working towards? Yep. Everybody's in a different phase in their career, depending mm. on where you meet them, yep. right? Can be building, can be growing, can mm. be just, uh, you know, chilling, staying, stagnating for a while, having a family, whatever's going on, right? But you mm. need to figure out where they are in that, in that cycle. What's next? And then, and then where they're heading, because um, some companies are in a growth phase mm. and they need somebody that wants to grow with them. But with that comes a lot of hard work, a lot of extra hours, a lot of stress, mm. you know, and a lot of juggling. But some companies are very well established mm. and they're moving at a slower pace. And yeah. that might suit somebody who is at that time in their life where they're not trying to climb the ladder, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure I make an introduction that is right based on where the company and the person is at. Yep. So that's a very important question for me to find out where they're heading and why. <clears throat> and that would be quite big for HR, wouldn't it? Big, yeah. Because the people element of any business is HR. Mm. Um, and your, your clients, would you find, like what's that balance between established brands that are like, look, we've got a team of 10 here. Um, we need to plug into this structure and focus on just this little niche and that's the kind of steady role. Mm. Um, or compared to like, here's a two man band. We know we've got to scale because we've got a business that's thriving, but there's just a couple of us. Like what's that balance like in terms of your clientele? It's a big mix. Yes. I think the most, um, you've got uh, HR consulting as well. Mm. That's probably the most high octane yeah. HR you can do. Yes. It's like juggling priorities, heaps of clients. Yeah. You've always got to pick the ball up when someone's dropped it. It's really intense and mm. that's not for the faint hearted. Mm. Uh, and then you've got internal roles where they're standalone. Yeah. So you're doing everything from payroll through to recruitment, through to all the ER matters and everything in between. Mm. And that's busy. It's a lot of pressure and it, you can't, um, enjoy a role where you have a, a real strategic impact because yeah. you're doing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Executing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's other roles in bigger teams where you're coming in for a purpose, you know, and it may be to look at the employee benefits program and look at retention. Mm. And they're all very different roles for all very different skill sets because mm. HR is so broad. Yeah. And I find, depending on the company and how mature their internal HR is, yeah. they need to consult our clients around, well, what are you trying to get out of this role? What does mm. HR mean to you internally? Mm. You know, where you're heading with it? Can't and you do? It. Can't you do it all? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want, right? I know, I know, I know. Okay, cool. So, your first top interview question was, "Where are you headed?" And your second one is, "Where are you? What was it? Where are you at?" First now? one. Uh, why are you leaving your current role? Why are you leaving? What's going Sorry, on? Yes, Talk why? To me. And the second one was, "Where are you headed?" Yeah. What's your third one? Well, it's a little bit selfish, but it is. Um, how many other interviews are you going on? Like. Yeah. How far down the path are you with other roles? Um, are you expecting an offer soon? Have you been out there interviewing for a while? Who have you met? Because I wouldn't call that selfish though. Like well, you're, you're, gonna, you're saying, where are you at in your process? Like, have you have you got an offer in hand? Like, geez, what can I do with that? Of course, I've got four days to turn something around. It's not going to be very, <laughs> you know, high quality. All you're doing is comparing. Unless there's something wrong with that offer, mm. and you're not going to take it, that's a different story, right? Mm. No, I understand. Like, is early on, late on? Well, part of the process of the interview for me is firstly figuring out, you know, they only have one head, you know, they're yeah. likable, they communicate yeah, yeah, yeah. well, they can do the role, all those things are major red flags, but then how best can I help them, you know? Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to establish and mm. then build that trust. So if they are at a point where I can actually help them mm. and they're genuine about it, I can. Yeah. Because you don't want to waste people's time. There's, I think, too many recruiters out there that don't invest time in getting to know the people they're working with. Mm. It's a pure numbers game. It's a KPI yeah. game. I flicked yeah. out 10 CVs today and I hit my metric. Yeah, but you didn't impress anybody. Why did we, we, <laughs> so, and we wonder why we didn't close them. Yeah, you know. You didn't understand them. That's a big part of, of mm. what um, of how I operate. So that's very really important. Okay. So at what point? At what point do you go? I can't help you because you're too far down the process with 
certain things. Well, I mean, if they're expecting an offer, let's see how that rides out, you yeah. know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. is it a good job? Yeah. You know, like, what are you doing here? Are you salary yeah. benchmarking or are you looking for a role? And so, <clears throat> so that's that's preservation of your time too, right? Yeah. Because at this point you go, look, let's pause, I'll call in a week. Yeah. You know, and you're, you're probably also mining for roles out of that question as well, right? Oh, you know, can't hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who are you meeting with? X, Y, Z. Great. <laughs> <laughs> But it also protects our clients' time, you know, like they're busy and then you put up a candidate and all of a sudden two days later they've got a job. Yep. That's not helpful. No, no one wins. You know? No one wins. Not even the candidate. Yeah. Love it. Okay, great. Well, look, my third question for you is, what is your favourite closing question, if you have one, or process, or how do you close? So there's obviously two closes you have to do here. You have to client the candidate, right? Correct. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Valid. Valid. I'm thinking more about the candidate, but let's see you both. Okay. Well... That's such a real estate answer too. <laughs> <laughs> so with the candidates, um, you know, we've done all the interviews coming towards the end here. You know, I'll probably do this before the, just before the last interview, mm-hmm. you know. I like to have the salary um, conversation really early, yeah. what are your expectations, I know what the client's appetite is, so there's no surprises, you mm-hmm. know. And then I'll say after they've, you know, one or two interviews, if say there's three, um, if we're able to meet your figure, whatever that is, and you get that offered to you at the end of this next interview, mm-hmm. will you say yes? Okay. If not, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then it's a done deal. Yeah. You know, so long, as long as it blow up in the interview for some reason. Mm. But if you think it's going well, I think it's a very valid question. And then you pre-close them, mm. the offer comes, it's a matter of paperwork, mm. in my opinion, you know? And you've worked with some big um, agencies, both in real estate and in recruitment. Um, is that common practice to be like so upfront with that closing question because I, I i've seen a lot of young people like just tiptoe around here's the offer hand i've seen people go here's the offer and then yeah. just wait for the Good. answer i'm like what are you doing why what? You, you're giving that monkey the gun yeah. you know risky risky it's really important i think it's professional to to pre-close because mm. then you're not wasting anybody's time 100%. you know like you're representing your clients here as well, right? Mm. And and it's very unimpressive if they give an offer out and you've got no control over it, you don't know what they're mm. gonna do. You say, oh, I'll give it to me and I'll, you know, chuck caution to the wind, see what happens. Mm. No, 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 if you give me this number, mm. they'll take it. Yeah. That's impressive. And that closes your client too. <laughs> 100%. You know? 100%. Um, I like it. Yeah. I, 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 we've got a very similar approach there. Um, fantastic. So let's say that you've done that perfectly, they give you the yes, Client gives you the offer, happy days, deal done. At this point, we're probably ringing a bell, running on the board, <laughs> put it in the spreadsheet, you know, already spent it in my mind. <laughs> and then you get that call a week later, counter offer. Ooh. So how do you handle counter offers? And it might not be at that point. I mean, a lot of people handle it early on, mm. you know, always be closing, but it's also be preparing for that as well. Mm. How do you handle counter offers? It, um, I think you hit the nail on the head that it's an early conversation. Mm. Um, I like to start to find out what the relationship is like with their current boss. Mm-hmm. You know, are they best mates from school? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, are they related to you? You know, how, how, how well do you guys get along here? What's the dynamic? Because that's really important. Mm. Um, second to that, uh, you know, what was your last experience like when you resigned? You know, what was the process like for you? Do you know what it's like? like yeah, when was the last time you resigned? Yeah, and then so you start to have, you start to open the conversation about mm. they don't know where it's heading, you're just being a good consultant, right? And you get a sense out of those answers pretty quick how they're gonna react, right? Of course. And then right towards the end of the process, you know, when it's time, you know, you don't waste this until it's really, you know, you think you're gonna get a deal here. Mm. But I like to tell them a bit of a story about, well, uh, going and resigning and then taking it back and then staying is like being unfaithful to your partner and expecting them to forget it and things to be normal, mm. right? It mm-hmm. doesn't work out. Mm. And there's a statistic, which is somewhere, somewhere between 70, 80% that everybody that accepts a counter offer within six months leaves anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like that would scare the hell out of me if I'm gonna take a counter offer. What's what yeah. a waste of time? And you've lost a good opportunity here yeah. just to stay in your comfort zone. Yeah. So I like to, ex- I, I do um, share that with everybody like that. when it's you know necessary. <clears throat> One I've heard as well is that, you know, if you want to add to that would be, you know, don't take my word for it, Google it. Yeah. And if you Google like how the, that percentage and they see it and they go, oh crap, he's not talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's a great one. Yeah, it's real. Um, I love it, okay. My last question for you, and I think it's a really valuable one for a lot of recruiters and anyone in sales and and an environment like this, but how do you pull yourself out of a slump? Mm. We all have them. Mm. I don't care how good you think you are, everyone has a slump. Mm. 
What do you do? It depends. Like some slumps are extreme, you know. Like you're in a slump, you think, I don't know if I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to, I'm just going to quit, get a job, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all had those. You know, like it, it goes through because recruitment's such a tough business, mm. you know. It's champagne or razor blades, you know. It really is. It's it can be tough, and so the the highs are high and the lows are low. I find um, distance and perspective makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Like if you're having a bad week or a bad day, just, you know, it's only a short term problem. Go out for a walk, clear your head, call the friends and do a podcast, you mm. know, just do something to get your energy out of that space. Yes. But if it's an existential crisis and it's a really big slump, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to take massive action. Yeah. You know, you need to pull yourself out of it, remind yourself that you're really good at what you do mm. and just hit the phones or do whatever it does that generates your business to pull yourself out of it. Because mm. you're in a slump because you're not making money. Mm. <laughs> That's it, right? That's the only time. The only way to fix that is to take action. Yeah. And you look yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I've been weak, I haven't done these things. I've become complacent in whatever area mm. and you need to go and just take action and that mm. generally solves all the worries <laughs> oh mate and that's 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 a perfect approach do you have so just on that do you have do you have a mentor or anyone you call on the go that you go red flag like i'm 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 in this hole i've dug too far i can't get out <laughs> do you or are you pretty self-reliant my wife um, acts as counsel a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I work with my dad too, so he's been a lot of help mm -hmm. and support along the way. Mm -hmm. You've also supported me a lot, Brett, when oh. had some bad days, mate, so thank you. Um, it's the ice bath. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ice bath. Yeah, you know, I, I could have more mentors, if I'm honest, to mm -hmm. really reach out to at times like that. But again, sometimes it's an ego thing. You don't want to reach out and say, I'm doing it tough. Mm -hmm. You know, be honest about that. So you fight this internal battle on your own, in, mm -hmm. in your own world of hell. But, um, when you do actually uh, ask for help, you're amazed at how much it mm. solves a lot of your worries. That's right? it. And once, you, and once you've reached out for help once, as long as it's not just a cry for help for attention, which I don't think what we're talking about is, mm. where it can be a really bad habit of just crying for help to get attention and it's just a vicious cycle. In the, t in the context of what we're asking, um, having a mentor to reach out to and say, I need help, the more you reach out and the more you talk to them and you're open about that as well, they're going to know what your triggers are and they're going to know the best way to get you out. Mm. And even they might even do that touch point coffee call or whatever and go, you're not right, man. Let's, let's just like nail this in the head before you get too deep. Mm. And, it, and it's a five second call that, that saves you months of anguish or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a, there is an ego and a pride thing that comes with getting advice, but I think the older you get, the more you realise you don't know. <laughs> and you just, like the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. And you just go, no, nah, I need to fill those, plug those gaps with people who feel more knowledgeable. Mm. I like it. I love it. And do you do anything preemptively to, to avoid slumps? I do notice when I'm going on a downward spiral, yep. you know, I'll start to crave sugar, I feel tired, mm. my thoughts aren't very positive, you know. In a monologue. And then I can pick myself up and go, oh, something, you know, and then I need to, need to break that cycle somehow. Yep. But sometimes you feel like self-destructing, you know, like it's like you just need to do it to put yourself back together. Um, so for me, um, keeping constant um, gym routine, mm. you know, making sure on the weekends and doing things to fill my cup, like long mm. walks, good lunches, catch up with friends, <clears throat> yeah. you know, social things mm -hmm. that bring your head out of the business. Yeah. I think if you maintain those healthy habits, you're less likely to fall into a, a slump, you know. Okay. And reading, I love to read. Mm. Like I'm um, all about the positivity books, self help mm. books. I think every night you just read a few pages of one of those. Yeah. It gives you a little bit of fuel, you know, a couple Absolutely. of ideas. Just yes. keep thinking positive, you loser, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I think once you've gone, if you've gone into a deep slump before, I'm not sure if you have, but you never want to be there again. No. But then when you're there again, you're going, why am I here again? Yeah. And you start to recognize patterns. And I think self-awareness, I think Gary Vee talks about, you know Gary Vee? Yeah. He talks about self-awareness and if, if, the, if the entire world had superpower of self-awareness, the world would be a better place. And that's 100% true. Because mm. we would, we would self-check ourselves like that. Mm. We'd be going, oh, that was a bad thought. I better go, you know, say three positive things just to balance it out, you know? Mm. And if everyone did that, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have slumps, we wouldn't have negativity. We, we'd have such a supportive environment. Mental health probably wouldn't be as bad as it is. Mm. Um, we brought up before, we we're all too pride, proud and angry, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, I love it. I love the journey, Rom. Jesse, that's it. That's the five questions. Nice. You passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> can I come back? <laughs> you, can, you can come back. You can come back. So, no, thank you for joining us. Absolute pleasure. That's what we have for you today. Join our mailing list to receive this week's episode material, hello at thelonerecruiter.com. And if you got any value out of today's episode, please subscribe, follow us on LinkedIn, share and recommend this podcast as it really helps us grow and get this out to a wider audience. Have an amazing day. And as always, may all your deals come true.